What happens after the initial negotiation? There's a lot of data on how to negotiate a job offer the first time. But what happens after that initial negotiation when the recruiter comes back to you with the new numbers? In this video, we are going to dive into the key items to focus in on in secondary negotiations and how to maximize your offer. People often leave money on the table when negotiating and this follow-up strategy or strategies require very little time and typically for thousands of dollars more and that's a trade-off that all of us should take. Now, if you're interested in learning about the first steps, I am going to put some links to some videos that I did for previous negotiation uh, in the YouTube description below. So let's dive in. Item one, have a plan. This is the foundation for secondary negotiations. What do I mean? Go into negotiations with the mindset that you will be negotiating multiple times. When I negotiated my offer with Google, I knew that I was going to say no to their first two offers and I didn't waver from this plan and candidly, they only moved the numbers once, but the second option was actually two options. It was a pick and choose. I know a lot more now and trust me, I can help you by watching this video get you more at least two times. So item two is our first script. So the recruiter comes back with a counter offer and your exact response should be, Thank you so much. This offer is still below my expectations. I'd like to think about it and get back to you. It is critical that that below expectations has a soft tone. You listen and heard me just lighten it up a little bit. And whatever questions, comments, anything that comes back to you, just say, thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> I'd really like to think about it and get back to you. You can give other responses such as, it's a family decision. I always like to include them. So I'd like to talk with them and get back to you. I'm an analytical person that really likes to sleep on it. So I'd like to take my time and get back to you. And to be proactive, you can set up a time for the next call the following day or likely the following day. And remember, all negotiations for your benefit should be done over the phone. Item three analysis and strategy. All right, it's going to be my favorite part. So now that we've received the updated numbers, we want to get into this analysis and strategy a little bit. And we can use these numbers and update our offer template. And I'll put a link in the YouTube description below for a free template. And as you run the numbers, think about where are there areas that are still room for growth. And then at these large tech companies, Typically, we've talked about this before, the easiest item to push on is equity. And by focusing in on one item, this is the first of our two strategies because typically it's easier to negotiate on one item in these secondary conversations because by focusing in on something like equity, we make it both easier for our recruiter and for the compensation team. It removes some complexity and it just makes us look like we're easier, simpler to work with. Now, the second item is the meet me in the middle strategy. And the beauty of this strategy also is that it's a simplified approach. And now you can take this in two different paths. You could tell the recruiter to meet you in the middle on one item, such as equity or on total compensation. And this is where, again, going back to those initial videos, the high anchor is very important because now we're coming to meet me in the middle it's a very reasonable ask, even though likely the meet me in the middle number is still larger than our target number. Item four, script number two. So we're going to handle this piece in two separate parts. The first call, we hop on a call and we make the simple ask of our recruiter. And we say, if you can meet me in the middle on total comp, I'd likely sign the offer or if you could increase the equity by 120K, I would strongly consider this offer. And then we go back to those same words from before. Thank you, I appreciate that. And ultimately we'll default back to, if you please take my expectations back to the comp team. Now in the second call, our recruiter comes back to us and gives us likely messaging. This is best and final. I don't believe the comp team is going to move anymore. And we show graciousness and kindness and say, thank you so much. I'd like to think about it and get back to you because now we're showing consistency. 
Really, I never want you to accept an offer without building in a little bit of space, unless that secondary number blows away our ask or meets our ask. That's when you could consider accepting, but it's typically better not to accept on the spot. Okay, item five, back right into analysis and strategy number two. Almost everybody leaves money on the table at this point. Best and final is not always a best and final. But in our analysis, we need to figure out where to push just a little bit. Typically, depending on the size of your actual offer, this is where maybe we're pushing under 10K. I mean, it's got to be really, really small. So maybe we're doing a small push on the base at this point. We're revisiting base. Maybe it's a small additional push on equity. Maybe it's a small additional push on sign on or asking for a sign on if you didn't get one before. And this can really play in two ways. Your recruiter could say, look, I don't need to give them more at such a small ask, or it's such a small ask, let me try and get them a little bit more. So item six, let's go on to script number three. So basically you're just gonna say, thank you so much. If you can just get me to X, I'd be willing to sign the offer. Then again, we give in, we build in that pause and then same process. Thank you, I appreciate that. And please take my expectations back to the comp team. Now, all of those items are gonna depend on what they say, but that's kind of our consistent push that I want you to be thinking through. Item number seven, sign on back into equity. In the last conversation, once you get the final offer, remember, this can be a back and forth of more than three times. But whenever you hit that final point, and you'll know it, and they will not budge, the last question, if you've received a sign-on, is see if you have the option to put a sign-on back into equity. Because most tech companies, big tech companies, will consider doing this for you. It's a lower risk for them. They're spreading money over a longer period of time, and it lowers the cash portion of your offer. And why would this benefit you? Well, let's say you get a 20K sign-on, for example, maybe it ends up going back in as 40K in equity. Granted, it's over a longer period of time, but still can be a very smart play. I really hope these tips help. Good luck.